question here is what are what are they exactly afraid of? And and one thing that really resonated with me is uh, I was at at the at the movie theater where where it was shown uh, twice here in Russia, the only two showings. And I ran into a young man about 27 years old who walked out of the movie. Uh, into a crowd of cops who were waiting to to investigate whether or not the movie had actually played, apparently. Um, and he felt that the movie had a lot of strong... Uh, it resonated quite strongly with, with contemporary issues here in Russia. Um, and he, he sort of he looked around at all the cops and he pointed at them and look at all these uniformed men uh, trying to ban art for the sake of ideology or something. And really, I... The, the big takeaway here is that, that Stalin, in particular Stalin's actions during the Second World War, have become maybe the, the critical focal point of Russia's contemporary narrative about what, it, what the Russian state is, where it comes from, and where, where it's going. And in the absence of any sort of constructive future vision, everything is predicated on this idea of, of having strong leaders in the past who saved the nation and, and sort of the state above all. And so what I think they're most afraid of is people laughing at the state. And uh, one side comment this young man said to me is that he felt that the mechanisms displayed in the movie about all these, these high-level politicians jockeying for power, uh, to him felt a lot like the way the mechanizations of power today. And so it's possible that when the culture ministry held its private viewing of this film last Monday, I... Uh, it, uh, it hit things on the, it, it hit too close to home, in a, in a, in, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, but of course the formal reasons are that it's offensive, it mocks Russian history, and there was, there was of course this buzzword, possible extremism thrown around. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Russian uh, state press has been quite negative on this film. I think the tabloid Komsomolska Pravda even referred to it as a film that Hitler himself could have, could have made. Um, but what do you think this broader society, besides this young man you spoke with, how do you think they're responding to it? I, so, so far, I mean, based on the two screenings of, of Russians that have seen it in Moscow, um, I, I saw the crowd that came out after one. Nobody seemed greatly offended. I mean, you, you walked around and just sort of straw pulled people, you know, what was the big deal? Nobody could really answer that. And I, I don't think that ordinary Russians find it nearly as offensive as Russian officials. Uh, it could be wrong. Not a lot of ordinary Russians have been able to see the film. And uh, they did not... It, nobody was walking out of the movie furious, from what I could see. Mm -hmm. um, so in the last few weeks, we've seen a couple of stories that we could say testify to what we might call culture wars in Russia. There's the death of Stalin. There was a case where some cadets at the Ulyanovsk Air Academy recorded a video of themselves half naked, a music video where they danced to the, um, the song Satisfaction. There was then a huge controversy with some officials calling for them to be severely punished. And then people around the country across different social groups and professional groups began recording their own music videos in support. This week there was a gay couple that married in Copenhagen and managed to get their marriage recorded or, or registered in, in, in Moscow. Now their, their passports have been invalidated. What do you think is going on here? Does this speak to something bigger in Russia? I think that there's always been a disconnect, possibly generational, uh, between, between what's going on at the official level in Russia and, and what's actually happening in society. Obviously, Putin continues to enjoy, as far as we understand, uh, uh, quite widespread support. Um, but at the same time, a lot, a lot of people exist as part of the world, I think, in a different way than, than, than the Russian government would present. Uh, these people are on the internet. They are consuming pop culture from around the world. They're interacting with people around the world. They're traveling abroad. Uh, and they, I think, are a lot, a lot more connected than, than we tend to think. A lot, and, and I think this sort of reflects the narrative that people, that, that, at least in the West, uh, that people were, were noticing about Russian society maybe five, six years ago. Um, before the current uh, Putin entered for his current term and, and things sort of turned inward again. Um, and, and there's been a lot of, under, under all the noise, I think that these currents have just sort of been continuing as they have been. Um, and we've been very distracted by the official narrative for the past several years. And, and every once in a while you get these signs that, that Russian people are, are not buying it as much as we assume they are. Mm -hmm. You've, uh, you've lived in Russia for several years now already. In the time you've been there, have you noticed this change personally? Do you think I first arrived in Russia in 2012 as an exchange student, and uh, I, 
I think it's it's always been there as long as far as I've known Russia. My entire time here, I've always I've always felt this way about Russians, particularly in their twenties, um, are are more alike their their peers, particularly in the West, than they're not. And and I think that again, I just think that we've sort of been missing it amid the broader the, the broader trends that we've been seeing. And and this is part of an effect that that again, most of the the means of mass communication in Russia are state controlled, but well, outside of the internet. And so you see, on the surface level, we see all the same things that Russians do, and and it can be hard at times, especially from the outside, to break that to break that surface. Um, but I think it's been going on there all along. Um, lost, muddled a bit in in the patriotic fervor we've seen since Crimea in 2014 and and, and the Ukraine conflict since. Um, but I, I think it's still there, and 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 actually, this this whole thing with the satisfaction video, I think, is an encouraging sign that. Maybe it'll have another breakout in the near future that perhaps this period is waning, but uh, I think it's too early to tell. Uh, but it's there. It's definitely there, and there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of signs that it's there.